Hey guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and I've got another excerpt for you today. This time it comes from The Lost by Sarah Beth Durst, which is her first adult novel, though certainly a good YA crossover. As you guys probably know, I am a Sarah Beth Durst fan, so definitely looking forward to this, which comes out in June. The full synopsis as well as links to the book are below, so you can find out more there but I'm going to get straight into it. This is a little snippet from the very beginning to give you an idea of the tone and the style and a little bit about what The Lost is about. So here we go. For the first hundred miles, I see only the road in my knuckles, skin tight across the bones, like my mother's hands, as I clutch the steering wheel. For the second hundred miles, I read the highway signs without allowing the letters to compute in my brain. Exit numbers, names of towns, Places that people call home, or not. After 300 miles, I start to wonder what the hell I'm doing. In front of me, the highway lies straight, a thick rope of asphalt that stretches to a pinprick on the horizon. On either side of the highway are barbed wire fences that hem in the few cows that wander through the scrub brush desert. Cacti are clustered by the fence posts. Above, the sun has bleached the blue until the sky looks like fabric stretched so thin that it's about to tear. There are zero clouds. I should turn around. Instead, I switch on the radio. Static. For a moment, I let the empty crackle of noise spray over me, a match to my mood, but then it begins to feel like prickles inside my ears. Also, I begin to feel self-consciously melodramatic. Maybe as a 16-year-old I'd have left the static on, but I'm 27. I change the station. Again. Static. And again. Again. First option. An apocalypse has wiped out all the radio transmitters. Second, more likely option, my car radio is broken. Switching the radio off, I drive to the steady thrum of the car engine and the hiss of wind through the cracked open window. I wanted the radio so I wouldn't have to think. I listen to the wind instead and try to keep my mind empty. I won't think. I won't worry. I won't scream. The wind feels like a snake's hot breath as it coils through the car. It smells of dust and exhaust. All in all, though, it's not so bad. The palms of my hands feel slick and sweaty from the steering wheel, but otherwise, I feel like I could drive for hours. And hours and hours until the car runs out of gas in the middle of nowhere, and I slowly die of dehydration while the cows lick the remaining moisture from my limp body. That would make for a humiliating obituary. Half my funeral attendance would consist of family and friends, a few aunts and uncles I'd never met, Neighbors who had never spoken to me, except to complain about how I always parked my car askew. Friends I'd meant to have lunch with. The other half would be heifers. Great plan, Lauren, I tell myself. All of this, very well thought out. Kudos. I have no reason to be out here on Route 10, 300 miles east of home. No rational reason at all, except that I am sick to death of rational of facts, of hospitals, of test results with predictions that feel as cold and impersonal as the expiration date on a gallon of milk. I keep driving as the sun sears its way toward dusk. Sinking lower, it blazes in the rearview mirror until I blink over and over. Soon the sun will set. Soon, Mom will return from her doctor's appointment. She'll try to pretend it's a normal day, set the table, lay out extra napkins, switch on the TV for the PBS news hour, and wait for me to come home with our favorite burritos, our Tuesday night tradition. I haven't eaten since breakfast. Burritos would be nice. Seeing mom, I don't know. Glancing at my cell phone, I see it has zero bars. Next town, I promise myself. I'll call mom and I'll ask about the new test results. Just ask, it might be fine. False alarm. Silly me for worrying so much. She'll laugh, I'll laugh. After that, I'll call work and claim I was sick, perhaps toss in a colorful description of vomit. I'll say that I've been glued to the toilet all day. No one ever questions a vomit excuse. Then I'll fill up the tank, and I'll drive back and celebrate the false alarm with Mom. It's a decent plan, except that I don't see a next town. I scan the highway for signs. Speed limit, 75. Watch for deer. Glittering, $500. With the road so straight and flat, I should at least see the silhouette of an exit sign. But I don't see any exits at all, either behind or before me. It's an endless highway. There will never be an exit. Or a turn. Or a hill. Or a valley. Or a bridge. 
I know I saw signs at some point in the past hour or so. I remember looking at them. I don't remember what they said. I'm not even positive what state I'm in. Arizona, I guess. Possibly New Mexico. I don't think Texas yet. It is strange that there aren't other vehicles on the road. I watch the wind swirl over the highway as the sun stains the sky a rosy orange. The low light makes the desert earth look red, and the asphalt glistens like black jewels. It's a wide highway, two lanes in either direction, and except for me, they are empty. I should see some cars. A few tourists with kids in a minivan, off to see the Grand Canyon, or visit Grandma in Albuquerque. A pickup truck with a bed full of rusted junk, shotgun rack in the back. Maybe a motorcycle with bugs in his mustache. Maybe there really has been an apocalypse. That is from The Lost by Sarah Beth Durst, which will be out in June. And if you haven't read anything by Sarah, I would recommend it. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching, and happy reading!